Kia ora Year 12. In this video I'm going to go through all of this practice task, but I'll probably need two videos to do it because I'm going to go quite slowly. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the whole thing and see what we need to do. Well we're given two graphs, one's red and one's blue. And um, we've got an x-axis that goes out to, from 0 to 2 pi, and then we've got a y-axis. We're given the equation for the blue function. So the blue function is not a straight up sine or a cos function, it's this, it's y equals 10 times sine squared of x on 2. So you can guess what we're going to have to do first. We're not given the equation of the red function. We're not told directly that we have to find that, but we can't do much else until we can. So the first part of this task is to investigate the intervals between which the red function lies above the line y equals 6 on the domain x is between 0 and 2 pi. So let's just grab a ruler and draw in that line of y equals 6 so that we can see what we're after. Okay, so there's my line. Um, we're looking at the red function, not the blue function, and we want to figure out where is the red function above the line y equals 6. So it's just going to be wonderful. It's going to be between those two points, and I'm going to take above to mean strictly above. So the first thing we're going to have to do is to find the equation of the red function. We'll call that, what are we going to call that? We'll call that f of x. And then we're going to solve the equation f of x is equal to 6. And we're going to find these two points. We're going to estimate them off our graph as well to check that we haven't mucked that up. And then we're going to write that interval. And that's probably all I'm going to get through in the first video. Now, in the second video, let's just get rid of all of that because we won't need it. We have to work out, or we have to investigate for what possible values of x, possible values of x, do the two functions have the same value. So here we want to generalize the situation, so we're going to be finding general solutions for the two equations, and that's going to generate a whole lot of places, um, not just the ones shown in this graph, where the two functions will have the same value. But then I think it would also be nice to find the particular solutions here and here, and we can see that there'll be two of them between 0 and 2 pi. So let's get started, and we're going to start by finding the equation of the red function. And we want to look at all of the features quite systematically. So as I said, this is going to be slow. If you're watching this and you're bored, feel free to speed it up or skip ahead. But remember, you've got to do the basic stuff well. So the red function um, goes from a high value here of 9 down to a low value here of y equals negative 1. So where's the midline? Well, the midline is going to be at 9 plus negative 1 over 2. So the midline's at 4. That makes sense. That's my starting point for the graph. So I'm thinking that I'm going to model this with a sine curve. And my equation will be something like this. f of x is equal to a sine b x plus c plus d. This is my vertical shift. And I've just found the midline, so I know that my vertical shift is up 4. So it's 4 units up. I'm going to use a sine model, and that means that there is no horizontal shift. And that's because my starting point here my sine curve follows this pattern, and that's exactly the same pattern that the red line is following. So the horizontal shift is 0, so we've got d is 4, and we've got c equals 0, so that's nice. The next thing we're going to work out is the amplitude, so that we can get a. So the amplitude is 9, take away negative 1, divided by 2 gives me 5, right, so you can do that just by i, right, your midline is at 4, it goes up to 9, and that's 5 units, so a is equal to 5. The last thing I'm going to look at is the frequency and the period of the function. So the frequency is how many times does the red curve fit into one normal period of the sine curve. So one normal period of the sine curve is 2 pi. So let's just trace it out, here we are, we get Let's see. Oh, I've gone a tiny bit too far. We get one full period in 2 pi. So this is a really easy one in terms of 
stretch, there isn't any. The frequency is 1 and the period is 2 pi. So let's write that down. So that means b is just 1. That makes for a pretty easy function. So y is equal to 5 sine x plus 4. So the first thing that we want to do is to investigate the intervals between which the red function lies above the line y is equal to 6. So let's do that first up. So I'm going to solve 5 sine x plus 4 is equal to 6, and I'm going to do that using general solutions. That gives me 5 sine x is equal to 2 sine x is equal to 0 0.4. So alpha is the angle whose sine is 0 0.4. That's going to give me the principal value, and that works out to be 0 0.411517. So x using my general solution for sine formula, is equal to n pi plus negative 1 to the power of n times 0 0.4115. Let's substitute in some values to see um, what these two are up here on the graph. So we've taken off that nice ruler, we might just put that back on. Here's my ruler here. So I'm looking for this point here and this point here. So to get those, I'm going to substitute in some values of n and generate some particular solutions. So when n equals 0, x is equal to 0 plus 0 0.4115, right, because this thing is just 1. And when n is equal to 1, we get x is equal to pi, take away 0 0.4115, which is equal to 2.73. Okay, so let's go back and see if those values make sense. Now we could have done that without using general solutions. Okay, so let's have a look. What we need to do now is remember we have to say the intervals between which the red function lies above the line, y equals 6. So we need to now take those two values and write them into an interval and answer the first part of the problem in context. So from the graph, the red curve, or the function, is above y equals 6 for x between 0 0.4115 and 2.73. Or you could say 4.4115 is less than x, is less than 2.7, whoops. 2.73. Okay, so that's the first part done. So let's see what's left. Okay, in the next part we have to equate the red function and the blue function. Now I've got time to do that in one video, but my takeaways have just turned up, so I'm going to pause the video and go and eat some fish and chips, and then I'll come back and do the other video later on tonight. Thanks for watching.